My name is Christiana Olson, and I teach principles of drawing here at PCC. I am a graduate student in studio art, and I especially love doing oil paintings. <laughs> So I did this painting of Deborah at the beginning of um, the fall semester and as I was thinking about what to paint, I really love nature and I love doing people and so I wanted to combine the two. And I especially love portraying people when um, they look like they're contemplating God's creation, they are seeming inspired by what He has made. Uh, so with Deborah, I kind of chose a very woodsy scene um, where the light is coming from behind. I love backlighting and just the soft glow that it brings to the picture. And then I had a lot of fun with the texture on the, on the tree with the bark and getting all those fun colors in there. I just love how we get to portray the things that God has created because he's the ultimate designer and everything he makes is just, it's beautiful. I think I especially love her gaze. I took a bunch of source photos when I was trying to figure out what to do for the piece and some of them she was looking down but this one she's looking up and that just seems more hopeful and that kind of portrays the hope that we have in God, our Creator. Hi, my name is Allison Shea, and I am currently a Principles of Drawing teacher here at the college. Um, I am a graduate student working on getting my Master's of Art, and this is my piece, The Seamstress. So, something I love as an artist is just painting people and their stories and giving elements of storytelling throughout my art pieces. And I especially love drawing and painting people and folds. Fabrics is my weakness. I love the leading lines. I love the direction it can go. And this piece is very special to me because um, being a first um, generation American, um, my parents came over with my grandparents way back in the day. And when my grandparents came over, the, they had to find work wherever they could. And something both grandparents had in common is that they could sew. So they found jobs in New York as in sewing factories, and that's actually how my parents met, through sewing factories. And I remember as a little girl watching both grandparents on both sides just working late at night, doing whatever they could at their sewing machines, and I just wanted to do a piece that kind of embodied both sides of my family and something they had in common, and that's how I came up with this piece. Hi, I'm Jess Valentin, and I am currently getting my master's degree in graphic design. And one thing that I really enjoy doing is hand lettering. And this is one of my pieces, it's Ephesians 5-2. I like to take quotes or song lyrics or even Bible verses that stand out to me. And I enjoy um, drawing them and making them look beautiful, as well as kind of telling the story behind what the words mean. Um, it's a lot of fun, and I enjoy challenging myself with different ideas. My name is Sarah Payne and I teach here at PCC. I mostly teach design fundamentals classes, uh, but I also love my history of illustration and graphic design class. This is one of my paintings, Waves and Tussled Hair. And what inspires me to paint are the moments that, that change us and that heal our soul. And so when I, when I paint portraits, I like focusing on the family relationships and honestly just the love between a mother and a child because I have a son and I know, you know, when they volunteer and come up to you and hug you, just how much that changes you as a person that they chose you. And so um, that was really the inspiration from this piece. This is not my son, <laughs> but um, I get that feeling from it. Uh, I like focusing a lot on developing color temperature and I do that mostly through a process of glazing. So underneath my first layers, they're very saturated. Uh, I try to get a lot of very bold color in there, bold brush strokes. And then as I go thin layers on top of that, the, the vibrancy underneath will shine through the paint um, and you'll still see some of that color but it gets toned down. So this is one of my favorite pieces and I'm glad I could share that with you.
I'm Esther Hallman. I produce the yearbook for the college as well as teach Photos 2 and Photos 3. Um, I do do photos in my off time and I enjoy doing them, but a lot of my photos I'm taking as references for the actual paintings that I do. I know a lot of artists like to do plein air works, which are good and I do do them and I enjoy doing plein air and going on location as well as seeing the colors that you can view on location versus the different colors that you get in your photographs. When I go to work in the studio I do reference the photographs that I've taken to uh, do paintings but I also use the plein air works that I've done just so I can see some of the different color variations that photographs don't necessarily pick up. Hi, my name is Winnie Sue. Uh, I am a graphic design teacher here in Pensacola Christian College. Uh, I teach digital type, digital typography, digital graphics, um, graphic design, web design, and calligraphy. Uh, I absolutely love graphic design. I really enjoy uh, visual, communicate, and problem solve things through typography, photography, and illustration. Um, so what I have over here was a project that I did when I was a graduate student. Um, we were able to redesign currency for a country of our choice, and I chose Taiwan because that's where I'm from. Uh, so with this one, I for this project I wanted to make it as realistic as possible and and I also want to represent Taiwan very well so I chose very famous landmark from Taiwan which is the National uh, Chiang Kai-shek uh, Memorial Hall <laughs> and um, which he was the founder of Taiwan and then this one is the skyscraper of Taiwan which it was once the tallest building in the world and also our national bird and it's called blue magpie and with this one what I also love, love about this project is the texture of the paper uh, you can see that if if you tilt it at a certain angle you can see things more clearly and, and the final touch for this project it was to add um, holographic element uh, so that way it can look more realistic this was done with uh, uh, I was able to cut into several pieces from a tape and yeah I think that's it Hello, my name is Jameson Jekyll. Um, I teach um, illustration classes here. Part of the opportunities I get here is working at a Becca book um, in their publishing team and working on their uh, textbooks. And a lot of what uh, we do over there is working with, uh, in the last few years, their readers from first grade up until sixth grade. Here's one of the products I have worked on. This one's a little bit older, um, but this is uh, one of the examples of things that we get to do over there and this is a growth chart for second graders and most of the products we do are small but this one's larger and um, one of the things I like to uh, work with is characters and working with their expressions and making uh, making the pictures fun for the kids and just trying to put a smile on their faces so for the most part I enjoy characters whether it be animals or people and just trying to get stories out of them and trying to make them feel real and come to life. I'm Laura Pribble and I teach web design and advertising design. Um, here at the college, but uh, I was a studio art major, so I was a painter and I painted a lot. 
And then after I graduated, God placed me in a job I really wasn't ready for. Um, he placed me in advertising, making websites. And so um, at the time I didn't realize he was preparing me for where I am today, but um, life is unexpected, I guess. And um, this is my favorite piece that I ever painted. And it was my first year of graduate school. Um, everyone in my class had to paint an orange. And I was really excited about the piece and I had this whole um, display set up and I was painting from life. And then I showed it to Mr. Jekyll and he hated it. Um, and it was a couple days before the project was due. And so I panicked, I scraped my whole canvas down and I started over. Um, but I got a really good grade on it, even though I was expecting it to be a complete failure. And it goes to show um, how you see yourself isn't always how other people see you. So how you see your work isn't always how other people see your work. Um, and I was just encouraging my sister this morning, actually. This is random, I know. I was encouraging my sister this morning. Um, she's going through a lot right now. And I said, we have to remember how God sees us and not how we see ourselves or how other people make us feel. Um, it's always important to remember that we are worthy because God deemed us as worthy. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Hi, my name is Bethany Burrell. Um, I teach the core print design classes at Pensacola Christian College and then um, into some of the senior courses, um, art business, it's called portfolio, um, but it's um, business for artists and then also getting your portfolio out there and, and ready for the world. I am a designer originally um, and then came to illustration a little bit later and painting. I love fine art, painting, drawing, illustration. Paper art is my most recent medium. Um, and I enjoy paper because it is like vector art. Vector art was always my favorite as a, as a design student. Um, I loved the flat quality and the simple shapes, but being able to create the illusion of depth with shadow and things like that. Um, and then when I stumbled on paper, I realized that it was what I was doing with vectors only in real life. And that that's my favorite. I love tangible art. So it brought the hands-on experience of sculpture and of um, painting and, and married it with vector, the flat shapes. So now I get to create the shadows using literal depth. This is my favorite piece that I have produced so far. This is my life verse, actually, Psalm 74. Um, let all those that seek thee rejoice, let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. And it's the wording of that last phrase that really caught my attention, let God be magnified. Um, and it made me realize that it was not so much about what I was doing, how I was working to bring glory to God, um, but how I was letting go of my own expectations, of my own plans, and letting God do His work through me. So in this piece, I kind of wanted to create this idea that we were looking out a window, almost, to a garden, to nature, and, and using the flowers and things like that to create, to communicate that message that nature doesn't work hard to magnify God, but God works through nature to bring glory to Himself. Um, and so by its existence, by fulfilling its purpose on earth, it brings that attention back to God in the way that it was created to. I have God as the largest um, shape and the largest element in the piece, but pure white. Um, because when you look for God in nature, you see Him. And I don't want to say he's this invisible element, I don't want to make him sound less than he is, but um, you can admire a tree for being a tree, but when you start to look for the design of God in nature, it's, it's obvious, it's, it overwhelms the, the piece, it overwhelms the whole. My purpose as an artist is the same as my purpose as a human, right? To be a good Christian, to be a follower of Christ, to let him glorify himself through me in my everyday life. The way that he has directed my life, the way that he has talented me is in the arts. Um, and so I love exploring each medium and finding the ways that he is uniquely glorified in those mediums. I feel like paper art just naturally brings with it a whimsy, an imagination, um, usually vibrant colors. This one's a more neutral piece, but it usually brings a lot of life and interest. And I, I love 
bringing that out. I think that paper is one of the most is one of the first mediums that we use as kids. We start cutting things with scissors, and it's um, it's been nice to revert back to a skill that I learned when I was you know four when I was able to hold the child safety scissors, and to be able to communicate who God is through um, this medium of paper art. My name is April Brady and I teach intro to digital painting and I get to teach an advanced digital graphics class for the grads. Um, I love digital painting so the chance to be able to teach people what I had to teach myself is really really fun and getting to see students go from the beginning not being very sure that they even want to take the class to finishing it and actually like enjoying Photoshop and being comfortable working with the tools and doing what they want to do. Um, it's really rewarding. I like it. Um, so when I'm not here teaching, I also do um, different freelance work. Sometimes I do portraits for people, sometimes I do caricatures, sometimes I do random stuff that people have asked me to do, which is pretty fun. I like trying new things. Um, and I also get to work for the National Bible Bee, which is really fun. Um, I get to do all of their illustrations for their younger kids' books that they produce, um, which is really, really fun. I like it. Um, then I also have this stuff that I do. Um, I'm working on a children's book. I've been working on it for too long. I'm hoping to finish it really soon. Um, but it's all about a little bat and how he's super excited about flying for the first time. And so he gets ready in every way that he can and makes his own little aviation hat and gear to head out and fly for the first time. Um, so it's been super fun to do the color and play with the art program and like learn new things as I'm going and figure out how to do the layout for the book and yeah it's just very very enjoyable and hopefully again it will be done soon but in between the freelancing we're just <laughs> sticking it in but it's good hey what's up guys I'm happy to be a part of mr. drew paints with you no painting as you can see but we have a ph photograph here and you'll see some other photographs in a little bit I'm sure I'm Greg Hewitt and I teach advertising design, grad graphic design, directed studio, some of those classes that um, just really kind of polish off the graphic design program. So why am I taking photographs? I kind of run the gamut on what I do. Um, I write, I paint, or maybe I should say I used to paint. Uh, I do photography now. It's been my creative outlet for really a long time. I started taking photographs when I was a teen, got my first camera back then, and then just something that I've always done. But as far as this type of photography, this is called street photography. And I've only been doing that for just about two, two and a half years, somewhere in there. And it's something I really am passionate about lately, just getting outside, um, just observing, watching people, watching activities, watching just kind of normal everyday life take place. And there's so much beauty in that everyday life. Um, even just watching, you know, a worker unload a um, pallet or, you know, a stack of something in the back of a truck late at night with certain under certain certain lighting conditions. It's just something um, as simple as that, that can be amazing and beautiful. This piece here is from not really a series, but um, from a large group of photographs I've taken in New Orleans. New Orleans has become kind of my urban muse as far as a location goes. Just a quick three hour drive um, west for us. 
just teeming with amazing food, architecture, art, um, scenes from riverside to you know dense urban uh, type of building situations. So I love going over there and uh, they have a great art museum too. So if you get a chance to go, I would, can highly recommend it. So this was on Canal Street. Um, it looks late at night, but it was actually super early in the morning. I think it was like four in the morning. And even at that time of day in such a big city, there's tons of people already active, um, workers going to work, uh, people taking the trolleys. And you can't maybe tell really, but back here is a trolley, one of those classic iconic New Orleans trolleys that's red that go up and down Canal Street. And I wasn't aware of it at the time as I was photographing um, the teenager there with his phone. But as I was shooting, that trolley came through and I liked the lighting and it just worked out really nice that that trolley was in that shot um, during those moments that I was shooting. So that's this piece. I have one other piece from New Orleans in the faculty show and then some other images from downtown Pensacola and then one um, of a family member in um, a storefront down in downtown Pensacola. So I hope you like the work. If you haven't given street photography a try, maybe it's something you want to do. Just grab your camera and have it with you anytime you go out. That's the motto I try to live by these days and just see what hits you. Thanks guys. My name is Kristen Bryant. I teach graphic design here at PCC and I have a project here that we've put up in the faculty display room. So for up here, I actually came up with the idea for this piece back in high school. I was reading through Proverbs 4 and these four verses, actually five of them, jumped out at me and I thought this would be really cool to create a visual for this piece. Wrote the idea down in an old sketchbook didn't come back to the idea until grad school and that is when this piece came to reality. The background of this project was I wanted to create a piece, a visual representation for each one of these verses, but I had a specific target market in mind which was teenagers. Originally my idea was to create the piece based on all the chivalry of knighthood and that era, but that wasn't necessarily relatable to the students or to the children, teenagers of the day. So instead, I went with a sports theme that's pretty relatable for everyone. So the first verse, keep thy heart with all diligence, that one was pretty easy to come up with. Football player keeping and protecting the football at all costs. The next one that I did was let thine eyes look right on, which was a bow and arrow. You'll see that one in a minute. The next one was ponder the path of your feet, pretty easy to do with a runner. The hardest one was this one, put away from the forward mouth. I brainstormed all of these different sporting events and nothing, it could have been applicable to every one of them, you need to watch your mouth when you're playing sports, but the only one that really had a term in it that would go with put away from the forward mouth was tennis. Put away is actually a technical term for tennis, meaning a shot that cannot be returned. Went really well with once you say something, you can't get it back. So that was the visual for put away from the forward mouth. With each one of these pieces, I grabbed my brothers and a couple of friends and had them pose for the photos. Took all the photos myself, pulled them into Photoshop to add the effects that I wanted to, and then laid out each piece. If you can see them all at the same time, they all go really well together with the color scheme, but also even with mirroring each other. So the first two center ones, you see the full face, but in keep thy heart and ponder the path of your feet, you don't see the whole face. So there was even purpose in that. With the center one, I did something a little bit different. This one is the verse that kind of pulls together each one of the pieces. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. So I wanted all of them to be looking at the camera and just really capsulize what was going on with the piece. This is actually a 3D version of it. I did it all by hand. Um, there's different layers of each part 
of the piece to kind of bring it all together. It was a really fun challenge for me. I love doing photography, I love doing layout, I love pulling things together with my designs and I really love just pulling in the fact that God's Word is to be seen. It's not just something you read, but it's something you see, it's something you apply to your life. And what better way to show that God is the ultimate designer and creator than through your piece. So I just wanted to be an encouragement to those who would see this. Again, the whole purpose of these pieces, and we can just walk over this way. All the purpose of these pieces was hopefully, I was thinking as uh, teenagers or a youth group, something that you could use those pieces for in just decoration, exercise room, whatever it is, but just something to visualize, to get wisdom, get understanding and forget it. Not. So my name is Dave Ham. I teach drawing one, drawing two. This semester I'll be teaching painting two also. This painting I worked on last semester for the end of my master's degree. Um, I wanted to show a very specific story that I had in mind of this girl who was mourning the loss of her grandmother um, because a lot of ex people that I had known that semester had experienced um, death of their grandmothers, including myself. Um, and it, it's a uh, interesting thing to think about. I wanted to show her obviously devastated um, with the look on her face and her posture and these sad flowers and even the temperatures of the background, but then also show the hope and life that you can have when you think about um, the gospel in relation to not only yourself, but also to um, possibly your, your past loved ones. So the light of the gospel is shown through the candles over to the side. Um, give a little bit of comfort and, and life to the painting. So, so that's it. Hi, I'm Nathan Drew Shinnan. I teach drawing and painting classes here at PCC. And uh, this is one of my pieces in our faculty show. I titled it Two Broken Vessels, and it's a depiction of Job from the biblical story of Job. After the trials hit, after his, uh, his servants were taken away, his animals were taken away, his children died, um, he was stricken with boils. So this is a picture of him surrounded by his wife and his three friends, initial friends there. And the setting, is basically in, uh, I wanted to, to kind of convey the house, maybe the house that his children were in when uh, the whirlwind came and they all died in that uh, tornado. Uh, so he's kind of in the thick of everything right now. Everybody's looking at him. He's central in the composition. He's scraping his boils uh, and also kind of a posture of, of pleading with God, wondering why is this happening? And if you read the book of Job, uh, you can see his conversations with God, his arguments with God, uh, his pleading with God. Um, and something that struck me as I was reading the, the story was that it said he scraped his sores with a broken pot. And that brought my mind back to Jeremiah chapter 18. It talks about the potter who was making a vessel and the vessel was marred. And so he broke it and he made it again. He made it something better. And so that's why it's titled Two Broken Vessels. Uh, I'm picturing Job just like that pot he might have used to scrape himself. He is broken here. He's a broken man. But we can see that God made him a much stronger person. He blessed him after this. And we all go through trials. Um, I had just lost my grandfather a couple of years before doing this painting. And Job was his favorite book of the Bible. And so that was kind of one of the biggest hurts I had felt in my life to that point. And just realizing everybody, every one of us has deep wounds and scars that we're going through. But seeing God use those things to make us again, make us a better person, make us a more caring person. So that's kind of the message behind this. And even since doing this painting back in uh, 2007 or something like that, seeing God use trials in my life, even from that time, 
uh, and how he turns those around and makes something beautiful out of those. Uh, that to me is one of the most encouraging things about the story of Job, how God can take what is hurting us and turn it into something beautiful. And going back to Romans 8, 28, that uh, he works everything out for the good of those that love him. Hey everybody, it's Joe DeGange here. I have the privilege of being an instructor here at PCC uh, Visual Arts Department. I teach several classes. Uh, I teach the art history classes both on the undergraduate and the graduate level. And I teach, I have the privilege also to teach the 3D design class, which is now part of our curriculum, both on the undergraduate and the graduate level as well. And when we think about 3D, we, we think it's a, it's a little bit of a different mindset and it's a little bit of a different conceptualization process than two-dimensional art. And the Lord has just impressed upon me over the years that our department really needs to have a full range of how we conceptualize uh, creatively and so uh, these 3D classes help the students that they, they give them a little bit of a, uh, a, an understanding and also uh, a, an opportunity to experience what it means to conceptualize both two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally. When we think about two-dimensional art, a lot of times we're dealing with the illusion of three-dimensionality, but when we deal with three-dimensional design, we're, we're actually dealing with reality. And it's, and it's the understanding of those two that, that we, we are pleased that we now offer that full range of understanding to the students. So it's, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's helpful then for our students to see our work and for them to be able to experience uh, what we love doing as artists and so, uh, Thanks to Mr. Dushinin and his videotaping of all of this, and you got you you get to be able to experience this show, even uh, from from long distances away. So thank, thanks to Mr. Dushinin. I actually uh, chose this piece. Then, when we talk about three dimensional design, when we talk about design in general, I've been in the last year few years now. I've been talking about the classical ideals, and there are seven of them that I've discovered and they all relate to the elements and principles of design. So when you think of the seven elements of design, there are seven classical ideals and symmetry is one of them. And so this particular piece here that I call oak leaf symmetry is a piece that deals with symmetry, symmetry operations. Many of you probably remember that from design fundamentals and the symmetry modules that you had to create. That's, that basically is an idea straight from nature. God uses symmetry in nature. I think God actually put that appreciation for symmetry in all humans. When you think of a car, how was a car designed? There was symmetry in mind. One side actually mirrors the other. That's symmetry and we take great pleasure in the design of the automobile. So when you look at my oak leaf symmetry here, you can see that we've got a module and this particular module is, has been positioned in this way. And when we think of symmetry, how we duplicate it and how we manipulate it then has to be consistent. So in this case, the, the, the module itself has been rotated three times. So when you look at this particular module and you rotate it one, two, three, three, you can see this is the new position. And then you take this particular module and you rotate it one, two, three, there's the next position. 
and then you take this module, one, two, three, and you slide it over. M.C. Escher was a fantastic artist in understanding symmetry. I love looking at his work. He used several types of symmetry. He uses translation, which is basically taking a module and then sliding it over, duplicating it and sliding it over, and it could be up, down, and diagonal. So M.C. Escher was fantastic, and he's a great example of both symmetry and what I call uh, symmetry tessellations, which basically deal with triangulation and, and how to create patterns, any types of patterns that we see, both in nature and in design, use symmetry operations. Logos, 50% of all the logos that have been created were actually designed using a form of symmetry operation. And then lastly, once I came up with the particular type of symmetry operation, the patina that's actually added onto the surface of the, symmetry, the, the modules themselves was uh, a, a, from a, a company called Sculpt Nouveau. And Sculpt Nouveau provides patinas, and it's basically a two-part process. This is basically a, a, a plaster that has been uh, cast. I used plaster, a glorified plaster. And I painted over the plaster with a, a paint that's provided through Sculpt Nouveau. And you can determine what type of patina you want by the, the, by the, the base coat of paint. And the, the unusual thing about it is that you leave the paint wet. So while the paint is wet, you actually spray another chemical over the top. The paint itself has metal chips in it. And the metal chips, once you spray the liquid over the paint, it oxidizes with these metal chips and you get wonderful variety. You never know really what you're going to get. And in this case, we got this wonderful, I wanted to get this fall weathered metal rustic patina. And up in this area here, you see these wonder, wonderful yellow colors. And then you, it's intermittent, but you see some greens. And then you also see a little bit more green uh, down in the, the lower end of the design as well. But the, the cool thing about it is that you just never know what it's gonna look like. And then lastly, the design for the modules themselves, the individual modules, was, uh, I love, uh, I'm from the Midwest, in the upper Midwest, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, and the types of, of oak leaves they have are just really cool shapes to look at. And then incorporating the, the acorn uh, as well, uh, and creating a very natural, shape and form with the oak leaf, putting three of them together, creating the motif, making a mold of it and casting it four times and then using the symmetry operations. Hope you enjoy the show. The show is really an interesting uh, co uh, conglomeration of, of the direction that a lot of the faculty are going and it's really kind of cool to see what our interests are and the directions that we've all taken and so for us as faculty it's really cool just to see each other's work and hope you enjoy seeing our work as well. My name is Brian Jekyll, and I've worked here at Pensacola Christian since 1981, so that's about uh, 38 years. I've had the privilege of working on the, the Bible Project, Bible flashcards is what they call them. Um, during that time, it was Dr. Horton's very special project, and, and those are called Bible flashcards. And, and so, um, every now and then, when I do an illustration for for the Bible project. I get these ideas, kind of what if ideas, like what if something. And this is a what if project. And, and so the, uh, the, the great, the star that 
the wise men followed that pointed them to um, Bethlehem and, and, the, and the manger. Uh, so what is the star? And although I don't think this idea is original with me, uh, the, you could maybe answer the question, what is a star? Could the star be an angel? The angel Gabriel, perhaps, or one of the angels that uh, appeared before the shepherds. And so this is a, a painting depicting the star, the wondrous star, the star of wonder, um, of an angel being that star, um, looking down from above and then directing our eye down below here. So we have kind of a, um, a scene of maybe Bethlehem and, and right in here would be the, the stable, uh, the, the manger scene. And so everything is more or less, we, we're captured by the, the glory of the, of the heavenly angel and then directed down to where baby Jesus um, lays. So that's the story behind this piece. It's a, it's a what if um, painting. The frame was uh, created by um, my son Jordan, uh, who works at the cabinet shop here. And so he took some of the design patterns and created an original frame for the piece. And I, I think it looks very nice together.